Hi, welcome to Medical World. I am Dr. Hadi and today's new topic with biochemistry is the part 2 of the amino acid and protein. In the previous lecture, that lecture was about the introduction of uh, proteins and the definition of amino acid and the optical properties of amino acid was in that lecture now the next part of the lecture is the classification of amino acids a topic on demand most of the students they demanded they asked me to record a lecture on the classification of amino acids because they feel it a little bit burden cumbersome and difficult usually they even can't cram the structure and the formulas and today i will provide you that lecture in a very simple way that you will enjoy but i need you to to uh, hear the whole lecture from the beginning till the end okay and then you will enjoy and definitely you will understand the amino acids classification is different in different books and one of the most important classification of amino acid is on the basis of the R group. What is R group? In one amino acid there are two functional groups one is called carboxylic and the other one is called as the amino group that already have been taught to you people in the previous lecture and this this R group is a variable group this R group may be any atom or group of atom it may be one carbon or two carbon or three carbon or four carbon different groups we will classify the amino acids we have different amino acids we will classify them on the basis of this R group and one thing is the polarity what is mean by polarity polarity means the interaction or the affinity of a molecule with water if a molecule can easily interact with water we say that molecule is polar otherwise if the molecule does not interact with water it repels from water it repels itself from water we say it is non-polar and remember usually with polarity we use the word hydrophilic 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 means those molecules which shows affinity love with water and another word is hydrophobic hydrophobic is a word used for those molecules which don't uh, show any affinity with water and other words they hate water they don't want to interact with water so we have amino acids some of the amino acid are group is polar with hydrophilic power and some other not polar when they have that they don't show the hydrophilic power they are hydrophobic uh, one thing more we will the classification of the today's classification is based on a specific ph we will see all the amino acid at a specific ph called the physiological ph which is 7.0 uh, at this ph ph may be from 0 to 14 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 but while classific while, while we are classifying our uh, amino acids all the amino acid classification will be based on the 7.0 pH because this is considered as the physiological pH so every amino acid will be studied at 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 this pH right okay so going further in order to resolve the student issue about the cramming the names of the amino acids and to tell which amino acid belongs to which category i have presented my lecture in the form of some mnemonics uh, you will uh, you would love these mnemonics maybe you show some smile uh, some laugh uh, 
that is the first category of amino acid classification is a non-polar aliphatic R group a non-polar aliphatic aliphatic shows that simple carbon hydrogen CH 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 side, side chain and it does not have any charge or no polarity what amino acids are in that category we have I have mentioned the mnemonics of all promethane is leveled in glass. So it's a very simple sentence. All promethane is leveled in glass. Uh, you, 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 may it, you may not know the meaning of that. All promethane is leveled in glass. But that sentence will remain fit in your brain for a long time. All promethane is leveled in glass. What is mean by this now for us? All will be for alanine. All will be for alanine. Just wait for a while. You would be given the structure of alanine as well. Alanine and pro for proline. Meth for methionine. Methionine and is for iso leucine leveled forget about the remaining alphabets level le we are concerned with the le so that is for leucine is is for isoleucine those words will be considered which are written in the and the capital alphabets although to give uh, a sense to the sentence i have mentioned some more extra words as well but these extra words are not belong to any amino acids so we will focus only those alphabets which are mentioned in the cap capital alphabets in has no meaning for us glass it is again in alphabet so gl gl is for glycine gl is for glycine so we have alanine proline methionine isoleucine leucine and glycine in the first category of non-polar aliphatic r group now you will definitely memorize all these amino acids right one thing more why they are called non-polar because if you come to the to the structure of the, all, all these amino acids uh, it would be very easy now there will be no need for you to 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 do a lot of cream on it in order to memorize the structure come i will tell you a simple way that this is, these are the two functional groups and here is r we, we, we would do we would only change the r and accordingly we would give the name to that amino acid if you have alanine so we will put uh, a ch3 here a ch3 only was one methyl group attached here and become alanine that methyl group has no polarity it, it it has no polarity so it is just an aliphatic side chain right we will call it a side chain uh, and it, it does not show any affinity with water and if you come to another one is glycine glycine is more simple it have it has hydrogen here and now proline a proline is a special amino acid it is the only amino acid proline is the only amino acid I, I i would say a special amino acid because it is the only acid where the amino group is linked with a side chain all the 20 amino acids have their amino group free not attached to the side chain but this is proline is the only amino acid which in which the amino group is linked with a side chain here we have a side chain ch2 and ch2 another ch2 and and that ch2 is then linked with the amino group so you 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 can write it like this in a proper way right you can also write it like this so ch2 ch2 and ch2 and nh2 look at that this is the side chain this is the side chain of three carbon and that three carbon side chain is linked with the nh2 I, uh, in this case 
when the sides is attached we will not write it nh2 we will write it only nh and in this way we got a proline the the real structure of proline is written like this okay here is cooh and here is h we usually write the structure of proline like this the corner shows one cho2 uh, i write ch2 cho2 right here is another cho2 another cho2 and of course here would be the the nh group and here is the coh and h in uh, in the book of a uh, leninger biochemistry the amino acid shown is and the uh, here the carboxylic groups are given a negative sign because most of the amino acid at that physiological pH will remove its hydrogen from the carboxylic group. So it will be in the form COO minus ion, right? Okay, and, and, and I have mentioned something over the proline. There is a star on, on proline amino acid. Means there is something very special with, the, with this amino acid that I would like to share with you people. The first thing was that it is the only amino acid that ha that contain uh, that that its amino group is linked with a side chain one, and it it, it is also called as amino acid. Amino acid it would be better to say to word to use the word amino acid, not the amino acid, because the amino group is not free; it is attached with a side chain. This is another point to share, and one thing more special and in, in, in interesting is that. In any protein, let's suppose this is a protein long chain, and there are so many amino acids. Amino acid, right? Right, this is amino acid. You can find elasticity in that protein molecule, but proline, wherever, whenever you, you find a proline amino acid in a, in a protein, what would be the purpose of the proline in that? polypeptide it would be to provide uh, a rigidness a rigidity at that point right because the when the amino group is free that these amino acid will provide an elasticity elastic property to that protein but at a point where the proline comes proline's amino group is fixed so that point where which, which contain proline there will be no uh, elasticity there will be a rigidity so that why that is why uh, I would like to share that point with you and I did that now the next category is okay now the, the first category the uh, proline was done in methionine in methionine the structure is very easy what you have to do you are going to put R in case of methionine we have the simple group of CH2 CH2S and CH3 and CH3 yes this is for methionine if, the, if you put the side chain CHO2 CHO2 sulfur and CH3 methyl then that will be called the new amino acid called methionine so only we are concerned to memorize the name of the side chain and then we have another amino acid isoleucine and first leucine then isoleucine it's a very 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 simple just write uh, CH and one CH3 at that side another CH3 at that side that would become a leucine right at the side chain and the same structure if I just bring that structure a little bit down like this and CH2 and CH and now the same structure again CH3 and CH3 now would become isoleucine so that has gone isoleucine methionine now the only one thing that left is uh, 
Uh, yes, leucine has done, glycine has done, isoleucine, all the amino acids are now finished. In this way, we got the structure of all the amino acids and we also memorized which amino acid belongs to which group and we also discussed some of the special properties of the amino acid. Similarly, we will now shift to another group, another group which is called as aromatic R group. There are some amino acids whose R group is aromatic. Aromatic are those compounds which shows aromaticity uh, in other words the property of benzene like benzene or benzene like properties are called as aromatic so the first one is here physics tri tire it will be a mnemonic to memorize physics tri tire okay you can try a tire in physics right physics is for phenyl alanine and this is for phenyl alanine phenyl alanine try for try for trip to fan and tire for tyrosine wow wow that is that is so easy now to 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 get the name of these phenyl alanine tryptophan and tyrosine now the structure oh my god the structure of these three is very easy in case of phenyl alanine here you are going to put only a chutu and with that chutu you are going to write a benzene ring oh my god this is benzene ring you can also call it phenyl ring phenyl ring phenyl so if you attach a chutu and phenyl that becomes phenyl alanine because if you remove this group if you remove this group uh, it would become only phenyl alanine or only alanine sorry only alanine if you attach a benzene ring it will become phenyl alanine right and then we have tryptophan uh, tryptophan ring contain a group which is called as um, the indole ring here you are going to attach a chutu and then with that chutu you are going to attach a ring like this a five corner ring right yes this is and then right yeah this is called as indole ring right There must be nitrogen because these are heterocyclic rings so where we will find uh, in this one is most important and here will be a double bond this and that one and this one so this indole ring when it is attached with r group it will be called as tryptophan and the last one is tyrosine for tyrosine what would you do you will place just a phenol ring a phenol nucleus if you have a carbon hydrogen COOH and NH2 here what would you write you will write only yes th this is benzene and OH this is called as a phenol group you are going to attach a phenol group and that will become a uh, tyrosine so a phenyl alanine was very simple amino acid tryptophan and tyrosine these are called aromatic r group amino acid now we will discuss something about this are these three amino acids polar or not polar well these three amino acids are polar these three amino acids shows a show affinity with water why why that is a very good reason because that OH has the ability to make hydrogen bond with water here is water water so this OH group can make hydrogen bond with water means they show affinity with water we will say these amino acids are polar so the uh, the aromatic r group 
these amino acids show some polarity uh, because uh, and, and of course hydrophilic as well because they are soluble in water but mostly that uh, tryptophan tryptophan and tyrosine they are very good and more polar as compared to the phenyl alanine where there was no OH in case of uh, tryptophan who will make that hydrogen bond with water or who will be responsible for the polarity the, it is that nitrogen hydrogen that would make hydrogen bond with water okay uh, one thing more here i have uh, written a, a star on, on the tryptophan or a tyrosine sorry sorry this is not a star should be on tyrosine right here tyrosine amino acid this amino acid it is important because it is the part of some enzyme and 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 that oh group is considered as the most important functional group for those enzyme those enzymes function will be related to the that oh so this amino acid is special because it is a part of some enzyme and then we will come to the next category polar uncharged r group polar uncharged r. now the word polar comes polar but no charge and they are sister glue is as intelligent as our three sir right teachers right sister glue is as intelligent as our three so we are concerned with three that three is for threonine and sir is for serine as is for asparagine as para gene glue is for glutamine and sister is for cysteine cys T E I N E cysteine. These are the amino acids. If you want to write the structure of cysteine, glutamine, asparagine, threonine, and 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 serine, the structure will be so easy. Uh, for first of all, for cysteine, I write C O O H. Here is N H two. There will be hydrogen and what will be the R group here in case of cysteine the R group mentioned on that side of the board is CH2 and SH CHU2 and SH this is called the cysteine and I have mentioned something a star point and the, and the sister or cysteine amino acid because there is something interesting to share with you that cysteine is the, the that amino acid which contains sulfur okay and this hydrogen of the sulfur is responsible for the hydrogen bonding hydrogen bonding and of course that will be that will show some affinity with water and we say that it is polar because those compound molecules which show affinity with water we say these are polar so it is again polar and uh, because of that hydrogen okay now 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 one thing more look at the spelling one is called the cysteine okay e-i-n-e one is cis I -N -E. There is difference between the cysteine and that cysteine. Let's suppose if I say cysteine, cysteine, right? They, there is a difference. What difference? When two cysteine are combined, this is one cysteine, another cysteine will also come, and it is it is like this: SH and CH2 and then carbon. Here is COOH, here is NH2 and hydrogen. Okay, so this is another cysteine and that is one more cysteine. The SH group of these two cysteine will make a bond, a covalent bond. And that new covalent bond will be only possible when these hydrogen, with these two hydrogen are removed. When these two hydrogen are removed, especially in the form of H+, then a bond will be made between the two sulfur and now now this structure 
this structure where the two amino acids are linked by the sulfide bond this is called as this is called as the disulfide bond that is called as the disulfide bond and this bond after making this bond the new amino acid will be called cysteine t-i-n-e this is very interesting to note that there was a difference between e-i-n-e -E and i-n-e so now we have i-n-e cysteine amino acid this was one special point N another special point is that after it after it become cysteine it will be no more polar wow this is more interesting why of course you would give me the answer that because the two hydrogen which were uh, making bond hydrogen bond with water we do not have these two hydrogen anymore so we will not expect this molecule to have some affinity with water so now it become a non-polar one thing more with that cysteine that in in many protein when the cysteine molecule come what would be the purpose of this look at that if you have a protein molecule and you want to attach one side of the protein with another side let's suppose you want this side to be attached with with this side within a molecule so i will bring that side here and if you want that this side of protein is attached with that side there must be a, a cysteine here and another cysteine here so the cysteine amino acid c y s t e i n e that cysteine amino acid and that cysteine amino acid they will make a sulfide bond and hence it will provide a link within a protein molecule this is very important to know and not only within one protein but it can also make between two different like look at that is one protein molecule and this is another protein molecule we have two protein molecules if you want these two protein molecules to link with each other there must be uh, a cysteine here and another cysteine here these two cysteine will make a bond called the disulfide bond and that will become a linkage it will give us a linkage so that is why i i i wrote a special star point here that this is very something important for us and okay that was about the structure of cysteine glutamine and asparagine um, i would like to give this structure of this glutamine and asparagine okay um, again we have a carbon we have cooh and nh2 and h here in case of glutamine we will write Chu two, Chu two, carbon double bond O and carbon double bond oxygen and NH two. Right. This is now called as glutamine. Glutamine, and there must be a positive charge over this. We will call it glutamine and if you remove this group and you add one ch2 and carbon c double bond o nh2 it will become asparagine so two chutus glutamine one chutu asparagine it will be very helpful for us to memorize other amino acids so i would write another cooh nh2 and hydrogen here is 2 chu 2 chu 2 chu 2 carbon c double bond o and nh2 oh, this one is called as asparagine this one is called as asparagine and this one is called as glutamine right glutamine i-n-e i-n-e shows that these are 
uh, basic and positively charged if i would like to make it as per date as per date just as per tick acid or as per date do one thing Re erase this and write one c o o h here that will become as per date remove that and now it will become as per date if it is hydrogen it will be called as as per tick acid if you remove it it will become aspartate this is glutamine remove the nh2 and attach a cooh with this it will become gluta glutamic acid if you remove hydrogen it will become glutamate okay so the two amino acid aspartate and glutamate which will be discussed here with negatively charged R group. This is already discussed, okay, for you. The negatively charged R group. Those amino acids which contain negatively charged R group, they are called as negatively charged R group. One is called aspartate, other one is called as glutamate. If you look, those amino acids which are negatively charged, they contain two COH group. One COH group is here, one COH group is here. So two uh, carboxylic group, represents negatively charged R groups okay so this is done this is done and we will come to the fourth one positively charged R group histidine arginine and lysine what I have mentioned here his RJ is lying histidine arginine and lysine so uh, histidine structure will be shown to you first in histidine we have a, a CHO2 and with that CHO2 we will attach an imidazole ring here we will attach an imidazole ring like this okay this is called the imidazole ring here we will provide a NH and here is another nitrogen and a double bond here of course this this corner shows carbon carbon and carbon if you attach this ring this ring is called as imidazole ring then that amino acid will be called as histidine and uh, and there is a star point on histidine histidine is the only amino acid which contain ionizable side chain may mean that its side chain can be ionized with full positive and full negative charge so we say this is the only amino acid with ionizable a side chain and that amino acid is the part of some enzyme as well where it act as a proton Pro, uh, proton donor means it can give its proton in some re chemical reactions or it can get a proton by the help of this nitrogen because this nitrogen contain a lone pair and this nitrogen can give its uh, electron to any incoming hydrogen so that it become NH2 and there will be a positive charge on it. So that is why we 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 brought that amino acid under the heading of positively charged R group amino acid. And of course, this is um, uh, not acidic. This is basic amino acid in this in this sense. Histidine and histidine amino acid is also the part of the DNA as well. In DNA, the, the protein that is attached with the DNA or contain which uh, amino acid? Histidine is also the part of that protein and the protein is called as histone protein. Arginine and lysine. Arginine. Okay, now arginine. In arginine, we have three CHO2s with NH and NH and then we have a C double bond NH and then NH3 okay so this is the the structure of the arginine you have one four two three three two two NH C double bond O NH that if it is NH2 a double bond then must be a positive charge because nitrogen makes two hydrogen bonds and two that becomes four so we'll write a positive sign on it again this is 
Arjini and Arjini is a basic amino acid and of course positively charged because this is the R group and they contain a positive charge. If you want to uh, understand that in a more proper way, those amino acids have positive R group or, uh, or basic amino acid which contain more amino groups than the carboxylic group. Look at that, here is only one carboxylic group, but there are, but there are two or even three amino groups. So more amino groups will make that amino acid basic or positively charged. And if there are more carboxylic groups than the amino groups, then that amino acid would become negatively charged R group or acidic. So maybe sometime you say what are the basic amino acid and acidic amino acid, you can decide accordingly. But in today's lecture, we are classifying the amino acid on the basis of R group. And the last one is the lysine. Lysine is more simple in a word that we are going to write only that 4 Cho2s and 1 NH3. Right? Here is 1, 2, 3 and 1 NH3. Uh, of course, you will again write a positive side. So now look at that. This is now called, this is now not called arginine this is now called as lysine now this is lysine so lysine contain two nh amino group hence it is a, a positively charged r amino acid or a basic amino acid i hope you understand that whole lecture but in a nut nutshell we, today we have classified all the amino acids and all the amino acids were classified on the basis of the R group. Some of the amino acids are non-polar, other amino acids are polar. Some have aromatic R group, other does not have. So if you want to get that lecture, you can pause the video, reverse it and watch it again and again. You would definitely get so many advantages from today's lecture. And I hope you got the whole lecture, enjoyed that lecture. If you like it, enjoy it, then have a thumb up and always keep a very healthy smile on your face. Remember me in your prayer. Thank you. Bye-bye and ta-ta.